Megan, remember this winter when I was all about enlightened ice cream bars and desserts like their single serve cheesecakes? How could I forget when I was all about them too? Well, as much as I still love those, I am declaring it the summer of Sundays, as in ice cream Sundays. This season, I am all about grabbing pints of delicious creamy ice cream so that I can make all kinds of dreamy ice creamy Sundays. I am so here for this, and there are so many enlightened pint flavors that are perfect for whipping up other ice cream desserts, from homemade ice cream cakes to shakes and floats. Mm, yes, all of the above. I have been digging into their light ice cream, which comes in classic flavors like vanilla bean and mint chip, as well as impossibly indulgent flavors that pack in loads of mix-ins and swirls, like brownies and cookie dough and caramel fudge pretzel. And you know, they offer a similar range of deliciousness in keto and dairy-free options, too. You know what I'm about to add, Phyllis. As much as I appreciate options that make it easy for anyone eating any diet to enjoy quality ice cream, I am just here for the taste. And when it comes to pints, scoopability. And Enlightened never, ever disappoints. I couldn't agree more. And they deliver their feel-good frozen desserts straight to your door. Doesn't get any better than that. The summer of Sundays is on. <laughs> find out more about Enlightened and where to find them in your local grocery store by visiting eenlightened.com backslash D-I-J-F-Y. And don't forget to use the code D-I-J-F-Y 10 to get 10% off your order plus free shipping. The Instant Pot is my summer grilling sidekick. Like I will cook the ribs in the Instant Pot and then just throw them on the grill with like corn and some Texas toast and that's dinner. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You, a podcast about feeding kids. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Stacy. Hey guys, before we get into today's episode, don't forget to subscribe right where you're listening. And if you find yourself with an extra, I don't know, 30 or 60 seconds, leave us a rating and a review to those ratings. Help other busy parents and home cooks discover us. They help other hot cooks discover us. Hot cooks. Yeah, I can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen <laughs> or use your instant pot and slow cooker. Yes, that's what we're here to talk about today. Real time, real question. You have to be honest with us. Do you use your slow cooker and your instant pot a lot in the summer? Yes. Actually, it used to be that I used them more in the summer because, you know, and we've talked about this. So you guys can refer back to our episodes on both the slow cooker and the instant pot. We've handled them separately in the past. We're going to tackle both today for summer cooking. But, you know, it can be a little bit challenging to find a really great slow cooker recipe. They can be a little bit overly liquidy if you're not careful, especially with the Instant Pot because liquid is not escaping. I, you just have to use a source that you really know and trust. So sometimes stewy, warming, you know, stuff isn't my favorite done in the slow cooker in the Instant Pot other than chili. There are, of course, exceptions. But slow cooked meats are one of my favorite things to do in both um, or using either setting, depending on whether you have separate devices or one device. Um, And I love that for summer ribs. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to talk about. So, you know, I've kind of turned the corner on winter cooking in my instant pot and slow cooker, and now I use it kind of equally, but 100%. What about you? I think I'm the exact opposite. We're like, I... think of slow cookers and instant pots as perfect vessels for comfort food and like hearty, meaty dishes, pasta dishes. Um, I love the way they like make the house smell in the winter time. So I've actually had a harder time using my slow cooker and my instant pot in the summer until last summer when I realized like, oh, my instant pot can be like my little grilling sidekick and help me do so much prep work. So then when I'm out of the grill, I'm not sweating as much. And so now I'm trying to use my slow cooker and my instant pot yes. more. I mean, 
just so you're not sweating, even if you're not cooking on the grill. Like that's yes. what's great. You plug it in and it helps cook dinner. So I love it. I think the fact that I don't always love doing really saucy things in my Instant Pot or slow cooker, I'd rather just grab the Dutch oven. That lends itself to thinking about both of them as being really great summer cooking tools. Because it's like just slightly coat, like, you know, Pulled barbecue is a great mm-hmm. example. Like the Instant Pot, the slow cooker are great for slow cooking meats and then just putting on enough sauce that like clings and you can put it in sandwiches or like I said, you can make ribs and then, you know, finish them off with the sauce. So I love it. I'm very excited to talk about this. Okay. So where should we start? Do you want to talk talk about the slow cooker first or the Instant Pot? Do you feel like they're interchangeable? Do you just have like general recipes? Yeah, that's a really great question. I do think about them as interchangeable. I honestly don't use my slow cooker very much at all because I find that most things that I want to cook in either one can be done in the Instant Pot or in a slow cooker. And the Instant Pot's just faster. (laughs) And especially in the summer, I'm not as planned. Yeah. And also that you can use your Instant Pot as a slow cooker. I think a lot yes, of people totally. feel the way that you do where it's like, yeah, maybe I'm going to have a little bit more liquidy pulled pork, but I don't really care because I can do it in half the time. Yes. Yeah. Whereas I think of there's like specific things I would do in my slow cooker and not do in my Instant Pot and vice versa. For okay. example, I love a slow cooker for making big batches of fruit butter where you just like buy a bunch of strawberries, clean them, have them, throw them in there with a little sugar and you kind of like prop the lid open and let them cook all day. And then you can freeze that and use it in the future or like use it now for bread, for toasting, for putting on toasted pound cake, for putting into smoothies or milkshakes. Where So that's like a slow cooker only. I would not try to do that in my Instant Pot because the way the lid locks, you don't get that moisture evaporation that you really need to make good fruit butter. And then I think of like the Instant Pot as the greatest summer steamer, like whether it's for corn or for potatoes, for potato salad. And so like I would not steam potatoes in my slow cooker. I would do butter bath corn in my slow cooker, but not just like steam corn in it. Totally. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's interesting about the fruit butters because I was like, oh, that's such a smart idea. And I used to make apple and pear butters in the slow cooker with summer fruit. I was like, why haven't I used the slow cooker? Because instead I'll do it on the pot, like in a pot on the stovetop. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I feel like summer fruit is already so sweet and it's usually more tender fruits like berries. I mean, really, honestly, a lot of it is strawberries for me that it doesn't need to cook quite as long. You know, it's just, it's less sugar, less time on the heat, but using the slow cooker is a really great way of making it hands off. And then we're a little bit out of, this is more spring than summer, but like rhubarb, something I tend to roast it, but like that would be great. Something that needs a little bit more time. Um, either higher heat or more time for a longer time would be great in a slow cooker. So I'm totally going to steal that idea. I love it. Yes. Okay. So what do you lean on your Instant Pot for in the summertime? A lot of meats, to be honest. Um, (laughs) All of the meats. All of the meats. meats. So, you know, Mike does the grilling. So I really like, like pulled meats, you know, like barbecue, pork, chicken, Meat sauce is an all year round kind of thing. I know that's not particularly summer, but like, let's be honest, pasta with meat sauce is like my kid's favorite meal. It's really good for chowders too. And that might be nice. You know, I like to do like a corn chowder, Mm -hmm. you know, corn stock is really great in the Instant Pot and then you can drain everything off and then use the corn stock to make the corn chowder. I was just thinking to myself, if I was making more of a seafood chowder, would a slow cooker be better just because it's nice and gentle? I don't know. I've never made. What do you think? I don't know. I was thinking about the Instant Pot as an amazing vehicle for doing like a clam bake or crab yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, that's lovely. I've never made like any kind of seafood chowder in either the slow cooker or the yeah, Instant Pot. I feel like maybe it's because I feel like it's such a special thing that I want to be like really hands-on yeah, with it. Totally. But corn chowder to me feels like a uh, one-off. You know, like I can take those two zucchini that are about to turn and chop it up and put it in there. Those like four 
pieces of bacon that I have left <laughs> that didn't get cooked up. I don't know. It just like all goes in very easily. Like I just cut the kernels off of the cob and then put the cobs in with like a bay leaf and water and just make a quick stock. It feels less, I don't know, special, but I don't yeah, I mean, Seafood no. chowder is like super special, summery, yummy. Like you want to be really delicate with it. I want to go back to meat sauce for just a minute because I'm also obsessed with making at least once a summer Otto Leahy's fresh corn polenta where you like scrape the milk off of the corn. This is I like the corn polenta is something you can make really quickly on the stovetop, but having that meat sauce to put on top of it sounds like the ultimate like summer dinner party. So I love the idea making meat sauce in the summertime, which I don't do enough. But you talking about like chowders and soups made me also think of all the veggie forward soups that you can make. I know soup seems like off for summertime, but even if you're just like, I have this tomato, I have the zucchini that are about to go bad. Like I need to use them up. You could make that soup and freeze it for the fall and for the winter. So thinking of things like minestrone, I actually really like making big batches of ratatouille in my slow yes, cooker. Yes, that's a great or caponata. Yes. Beautiful. And like, that's really great too for like when guests come over like an appetizer, but it's like very hands off. You're not like, you know, you, you're offering this delicious homemade thing, but you didn't like slave over the stove. Yes. <laughs> just throw it right? on. And you can pot. turn on your oven to like roast it either. Delicious. Um, I want to, the meat sauce thing. One of the other things that I love during the summer is stuffed vegetables. It's, I grew up eating that. It's very, I think of it as very Greek, but I think stuffed vegetables, you know, throughout at least the Middle East is a thing. Yeah. So stuffed tomatoes, stuffed peppers, stuffed zucchini are all like very comfort food to me and they can be done in the instant pot and slow cooker too. And it's totally delicious. And you get that rice and that like meat sauce vibe, but stuffed into these like delicious summer vegetables. That sounds so good. I'm trying to think of what other summer veggies we do in the slow cooker. I mean, it's great if you want to make, like you have a bumper crop of tomatoes and you want to make just tomato sauce. Totally. I wonder if you could do the same thing with zucchini and make like zucchini butter or caramelized zucchini. I don't know. Just throw it out. I've never done that. Let me make that up. (laughs) Do it. Throw it out there. (laughs) Throw it out there. Okay, well, I want to keep Back talking to all about the meats. Yeah, well, because yeah. I was going to say, I'm going to change from vegetables. Because <laughs> I also always think about that recipe that Nikki Sizemore shared with us. So we'll link to the show notes where she uses the slow cooker. She has a healthy slow cooker cookbook. So I mm-hmm. think that's actually a great resource for summer because I think that, you know, the word healthy in this context becomes a a proxy for lighter, Mm -hmm. right? And that's the kind of food that I crave in the summer, like food that just needs like a lighter touch. Like, you know, it doesn't need to be heavy or heavily sauced. And she shared a slow cooker salmon recipe that is delicious. That's really great because like a nice light fish dinner where you don't have to pan fry all the pieces or like it isn't fussy. You put it in the slow cooker and it really does work. And I think she uses like quick pickled shallots on there and it's really delicious. Yeah, it kind of like is a nod to the slow roasted salmon that everyone has been really big on the last couple of years, but you don't even have to turn on your oven to do it. Yeah. Before we dig into more, let's take a quick minute to hear from our sponsors. If y'all have been listening for a while, you know that both of our families love pickles, like big time. So of course, we jumped at the chance to work with Grillo's Pickles, and oh boy, have we made everyone happy. (laughs) Grillo's is going to make you happy too. We've been fans since long before they became a sponsor, and we're telling you, these are the best pickles we've ever had. In fact, they are not only the absolute best pickle for your summer cookout and burgers, but they are my number one choice of pickle to top my famous fried chicken sandwich. (laughs) (laughs) Made with a 100-year-old secret family recipe, Grillo's uses only all-natural, high-quality, garden-fresh ingredients to deliver crunchy, tangy flavor with zero artificial preservatives or colors. And all of their pickle varieties are made cold, shipped cold, and sold cold, which gives their products a distinct crunch and bold flavor. 
Grilla's pickles come in original dill, hot and bread and butter flavors, and a cut for every occasion with holes, spears, halves, chips, and thin sliced sandwich makers. And their latest product, Pickle de Gallo, is a pickle-based salsa that's amazing on a chip or as a topping for burgers and dogs. We are completely obsessed with this stuff. No, seriously obsessed. (laughs) All you have to do to get your hands on this goodness is head to the refrigerated section of your local supermarket, including Whole Foods, Target, Kroger, Safeway, and Publix. Go to grillos.com backslash D-I-J-F-Y to grab your exclusive coupon for $1.50 off your Grillos purchase. That's about 25% off most of their products. And also find a store locator. Stacy. Everyone who's been listening for a while will immediately know that our partnership with Fancy Sprinkles is bringing me unending joy. It's making my fun mom summer easy and delicious. I know this might be the absolute most on-brand partnership for you that we have (laughs) ever had. Both of us have been longtime fans, but you're the one who turned me on to Fancy Sprinkles in the first place. I've been buying Fancy Sprinkles for years and tell everyone who will listen, seriously, that they should buy Fancy Sprinkles too. Not only do they have a ton of gorgeous color combinations, but their sprinkles are truly delicious. They don't have that waxy flavor or get mushy. Even on ice cream, Fancy Sprinkles stay crunchy and sweet. And here's the thing. Fancy Sprinkles isn't just about sprinkles. My kids and I have been using their easy candy for nearly everything this summer. They're like mini chocolate chips, but vanilla flavored, that come in a microwavable piping bag. Think candy melts without any of the mess or stress. You heat the bag for 60 seconds in the microwave, snip the tip, and then drizzle the melty candy on your favorite everyday treats. Popcorn, pretzels, ice cream, anything really to make them fancy. Don't stop there either. We also use them to coat frozen fruit, cereal treats, energy bites, and more. And of course, we add fancy sprinkles on top. It's so easy that even my younger kids can do it by themselves. Yes. And did I mention that Easy Candy is the only brand of candy melts that comes in a microwavable bag for easy cleanup? (laughs) That's my favorite part. You literally throw the bag away when you're done. That's all you need to do to clean up. As much as we love easy cleanup, you know that I have to end with the most important part. Easy candy tastes so good, especially with some fancy sprinkles on top. To order easy candy and pick up some sprinkles too, head on over to fancysprinkles.com slash D-I-J-F-Y and use the code D-I-J-F-Y to get 20% off your first order. That's fancysprinkles.com slash D-I-J-F-Y. D-I-J-F-Y, short for Didn't I Just Feed You. Okay, you wanted to go back to meats, and I feel like we need to talk about ribs, and I feel like you're the girl to do it. <laughs> you think of that. Zero there pressure. you go. <laughs> okay. Well, I love ribs, and I our for the July tradition is to smoke ribs, but for like every other occasion of having ribs in the summer, I it, I love doing them in the instant pot. It yeah. is kind of weird because you basically like twirl them around the instant pot insert mm-hmm. in a weird way where they're like standing up. But essentially, you steam the steam cook the ribs until they're tender, and then at that point, you can take them out and put them under the broiler with sauce or rub on them to get them like super sticky. Or like I was saying, they're my, the instant pot is my summer grilling sidekick. Like I will cook the ribs in the instant pot and then just throw them on the grill with like corn and some Texas toast, and that's dinner. Yum! That sounds so good. I'll be right over. <laughs> <laughs> So do you you finish them on the grill and do you sauce them? Do you like do. spice rub ahead of time? Talk to us. I Get like, specific. Okay. So pre-cooking in the Instant Pot, yes, spice rub. Yep. I like to steam them with a combination of beer and like a cap full of apple cider vinegar. I don't actually know if that adds any flavor, but it smells good. So like yeah. you can't lose, right? Yeah. And we, we always have those things on hand. Um, and then when they come out of the Instant Pot and they're tender, I will brush them with sauce and grill them. So they get that like sticky rib texture, you know, that like gets all over your fingers and it's just like the best part of ribs. Yes, yes. totally. And like rubs, I don't, it's like kind of whatever I have on hand or it's just super simple, light brown sugar, salt, smoked paprika, garlic, and onion powder. Yum. Sounds delicious. Throw it together. Speaking of putting the pressure on, 
we have to talk about chicken. Like summer chicken is so ubiquitous, like whether it's grilled chicken or pulled chicken. So do you ever use your Instant Pot or your slow cooker to do chicken in the summer? Chicken queen. Chicken queen. I just love being the chicken queen. It's so (laughs) glamorous. I live a glamorous life and I don't want you all to be jealous of me, but we are quite though. I I mean, (laughs) (laughs) um, you know, that's a great question. I chicken in the slow cooker in instant pot. I don't do that much. I mean, besides like barbecue chicken pulled, like if I'm going to yeah. do barbecue, like drumsticks or bone in pieces, I'd rather do it on the grill. I also really like chicken and turkey burgers in the summer. And we talk all about burgers in another episode. Mm-hmm. Again, that's more of a grill thing for me. It's great to do meatballs in an instant pot or slow cooker because you can, especially the instant pot, because you can brown them and then you can cook them without having to like messy up a pan, stand over the heat, and then, you know, either finish in the pot or like pop them in the oven, depending on how you do it. You can also make them really easily in the oven, but I just feel like the Instant Pot makes it easier. But I feel like the best thing for chicken in the summer is in the Instant Pot or slow cooker is pulled with barbecue sauce, like super classic. I also do like making chicken adobo in my Instant Pot. There's a recipe for that in Winner Winner Chicken Dinner. And that's really nice because it is like a saucy chicken, but it is kind of lightly sauced. It's almost like between a sauce and a glaze. And if you have just like a bowl of rice and some like light summer vegetables on the side, that's like a really beautiful, delicious meal. I would say that's an all year round meal. I wouldn't say it's specific to summer, but something like that is delicious. I put a rotisserie style chicken in the slow cooker on my list because I think that's like a hugely helpful trick to know or hack to know that like you can take a whole chicken, season it however you like, put a little bit of water in your slow cooker, put like either a make either make like a foil rack or put like a little rack in there so it's elevated out of the um, water and then cook it on low for several hours. And it'll basically, it won't brown, but it will get like that fall apart texture, which is just so helpful to have for meal prep. Like we're talking about these great summer dinners and summer entertaining, but there is some like practical, like I just need to have chicken so that I can make chicken salad and have that for lunches this week or, um, have like a, like I have a chicken that has to be cooked. Uh, I was going to barbecue it, but now I need to turn it into a Yeah, that's so, great. I totally am down with that. I think that's super, super smart. I want to throw an idea at you. Okay. Let's do the slow cooker and hot dogs. I've never <laughs> done it before, but I want to try it this summer, which is, can you make like big batch hot dogs, like dirty water style? Is that even the term for it? salted water style hot dogs for like doing a hot dog party. I think that's actually super smart. Um, I was also thinking that if you have an instant pot that has a slow cooker function, not if they're going to sit in the water, but it'd be interesting to see if you can like brown them first to get like a griddle kind of hot dog thing going, like just brown, like put it on saute, kind of brown them and then either just put it on warm (laughs) Yes. Or you'd have to be careful because even just coming up to pressure, they might explode. Maybe then you just switch over to the slow cooker and then just leaving them there for a long time, you know, keeps them warm. I think your idea is better. I just wouldn't br- bother browning them if I'm then going to let them sit in water because yeah, so you'll I kind think, of lose it. Yeah. I was actually thinking two things. Like, let's say you're having kids and grownups over to eat. You could fill your slow cooker with hot dogs and do like either seasoned water or some broth and a little bit of butter, maybe some garlic and onion powder and like just throw throw it all in there and leave it on low for several hours. And then for the grownups, you could do like sausage with peppers and onions in the Instant Pot and seem like exactly what you're talking about. Like I would brown the peppers and onions in the Instant Pot. I would brown the sausages in the Instant Pot. And then I probably would use the slow cooker function and just not use my instant pot lid to like finish cooking yeah, them. Sort of like how totally. you do boiled broth. 
And then you have all of that like ready to go and you just put buns out for everybody. I think it's genius. And I think it's so much easier. I mean, listen, a, you know, a grilled hot dog is a beautiful thing, but yes. it does take a little bit of work. Like if you really want to be like low maintenance, like no one wants to stand over the grill because if that gives you pleasure, it's delicious, it's easy. But let's just say you don't feel like it. You don't feel like firing up the grill or you have a lot of other stuff on the grill. I think that's a genius hot dog solution. I first saw it at a like PTA function where yeah. they were selling hot dogs from the slow cooker. So then it also becomes a thing where it's like, could you do that at the park? Maybe not in New York City Park, but like there are park pavilions in Chattanooga where you can like rent the pavilion and they have, there's an outlet. So you could like plug in your slow cooker, plug in your instant pot and have a hot dog party. I, I love only that. I saying that. Yes, I can. I think it's so <laughs> smart. What do you mean you can't believe? I'm coming around. I'm coming around on hot dogs. I know you <laughs> are. I love it. If this Big is time. like, if this is the biggest impact I make as part of Din, I just feed you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking of my impact on the world, I want to go back to chicken. <laughs> okay, give it Because I just thought of like chicken chili, summer chicken chili yeah. is really good. Like a much lighter version of chili is really, really fun in the summer too, I think. Like I like a salsa verde with either ground chicken or pulled chicken, or you can even do like Colorado style, like more like chunks you know, thighs or breast, depending on what you want. And then, you know, serve just warm. Like you can keep it warm in the slow cooker. It doesn't need to be piping hot. And then like lots of taco style fixings, like sour cream and chips. And I love that in the summertime too. I think that's great. Okay. Can I get us off of chicken and go back to veggies for just one minute? Because you yes. say that. Yes. Maybe think of hatch chilies, which hatch chilies have like Love a short season. Chilies. It's yep. usually at the end of summer. So it's a great time to make like a salsa verde or a chili verde, like a very traditional with the roasted hatch chilies and put that away for like later in the, I mean, it's great to eat now, but then that made me think, that you can also use more the like you have to be careful which model it is because not every model of instant pot is designed for pressure canning but like if you wanted to make salsa or you wanted to can any fruit or make jams this summer you can use your instant pot to do the like water bath part of it and preserve things okay so you're getting us i want to talk about seafood for one more second before we okay. move on because i was going to want to talk about both desserts and like canning, like sauces okay. and that kind of stuff. But I did, we were talking Ooh. about a seafood boil. We talked about a seafood chowder. I don't know. There's something about the chowder where it's seafood and it's cream where I feel like, I don't know. I just want to make that in my pot. It's just like a weird personal thing. Okay. So what about a cioppino, like an Italian style seafood stew with a light tomato broth? Yes. 100%. Right? Are you making that for me? <laughs> I will. But like mussels and calamari and shrimp, you know, really delicious. Would you do then, that in the slow cooker or the Instant Pot? I don't know. I feel like, oh, it's so tough because I I think maybe the Instant Pot. Yeah. I get worried about like cooking seafood, like overcooking seafood. Right. Right. Because then it gets like gummy and, you know, it's just like a real light touch. And that tomato broth is not like a slow cooked flavor. It's like no. a real light summary. And then I wonder if you can riff and put a little bit of like zucchini and even a little corn. I mean, it's not traditional, but you get some of those great, beautiful, you know, summer vegetables. I mean, it's not on like a booyah base too, which yeah. is delicious, right? Okay. Let's close it out. Sauces, desserts, like fruity stuff. I don't know. It seems yeah, like the only desserts I think of are like dump cakes, which is essentially <laughs> like you slow cook fruit in the bottom of your slow cooker and then put like cake mix on top of it and let it cook, which is sort of like cobbler esque in a way. I'm not against that at all. I'm not against it either. <laughs> you know, I think I'm hungry. So that's delicious. Stuff. Does it? Okay. I I don't right know now, that I do that much like I don't either. Dessert. I thought you might have some good ideas for like I don't know that I've ever done a slow cooked dessert or an instant pot dessert, but I I have seen them and they seem to work and then you don't have to use your oven. 
Cheesecakes are a really popular instant pot recipe. They are. And it's a totally wildly different texture, but they're not fast cooking in the instant pot. Like they, every single recipe will tell you, you cook it. It doesn't take a long, long time in the instant pot, but then you have to let it like to get the texture to be as divine as it is. You have to let it chill overnight. So it's not something that you can make like really quickly last minute, but you saying that reminds me, I had like for kitchen, I tested many slow cooker and instant pot recipes, including like, uh, I don't know if this is just like a universally known thing of brownie pudding where you kind of like cook a mixture of like cocoa powder and sugar and stuff in the slow cooker so that the bottom layer becomes like pudding or chocolate sauce. And the top part is kind of like a crispy brownie situation. I want that. Patty Catalano has a recipe on kitchen. It is del- like crazy delicious. Okay, so I'm making that. So that's yeah. that. And, you know, going back to the cheesecake thing too, you know, of course there's always going to be those recipes that – It's like, this is why we use the Instant Pot. It's very quick, no planning. But other things in the summer really like shift your perspective to thinking about how can I save heat and energy? Yeah. (laughs) Right? So that is a bonus in the summer, especially if it's something that can sit so that you can be outside with the kids or getting your nails done, whatever it is that you want to do, working. I don't care. But it's outside. You know, whereas in winter, like having the stove on, Like being home while something slow cooks so that you can tend to it here and there is like a nice cozy thing. Like that's not the vibe in the summer. Yeah. I do want to mention creme brulee, which you can do in the Instant Pot. You can only make four at a time, but it makes it really easy. And again, that's like one, you cook it, you let it chill, and then you can like heat it back up and do the the actual Mm -hmm. bruleeing of the creme brulee. I was going to say you need to fire it up and that's not the technical term. (laughs) Fire it up, baby. (laughs) But that also makes me think you could probably do like some puddings either in the slow cooker or in the instant pot, which I love pudding in the winter, but like vanilla pudding with fresh yeah. strawberries on it. So I was good. just going to say that pudding is really, really great in the summer because it goes so great with fresh fruit. Yes. I love that. You know, it's kind of like whipped cream and fruit, pudding and fruit, and then also whipped cream. You, you can't go wrong. <laughs> okay. So but see, you said sauces, which we talked about, like making tomato sauce in your slow cooker yeah. or instant pot. The like hatch chilies and doing like a chili verde or verde sauce in your slow cooker. What else would you sauce wise would you cook? I don't know. That's good. Like a you could slow cook a barbecue sauce, like and then mm. you know, use it on your ribs or like bring it to the grill afterwards. Make hot sauce in your yes, slow cooker. That's if you a have like a one. lot of peppers from the farmer's market or from your garden. Yeah. And then like also going back to thinking about like ratatouille, like just like cooking down a lot of garden vegetables that you can use as like an all-purpose sauce for like pasta or dipping or like a base that you freeze and then you add to tomato sauce to like boost its goodness and flavor. Can you do like all different fruit sauces, like strawberries, syrups, and I yeah. don't know. What else? Like peach, cooked down peach sauce, like anything that you want, like compote that you can use as a topping on ice cream or on top of, you know, I don't know, like a nice simple sponge cake or angel food cake, which is like really light and fruity and delicious and summery. That gets me thinking also about like more meal prep stuff where it's like mm-hmm. in the summertime, you can make corn broth and that's something you could do really quickly in your instant pot and then you have it for future meals or you can turn it into chowder yeah i feel like there's something with peach pitch that i'm i don't know what it's called but like you basically cook them and make sort of like a flavorful syrup with them as well we're i'm gonna try to find it it's like because they have like an almond flavor to them yes i mean you can almost smell that and have you ever like cracked one open or when your peach is super ripe and and it it has almond in it yeah totally so i think there's also some like fruit broths and stocks and using up scraps that you can do with your instant pot and your soap i love that's making me think and this is going way off but like uh vichy soir or like those classic yes. really like thin watery broths like could you do a bunch of those like with different summer fruits and then chill them and then eat that for dessert with fresh fruit or i don't know how else? But it sounds good. You know, our listeners group is going to have even more ideas. I feel like there's a bunch of canners too in our community who are going to tell us like all the things we should be canning. I love that. 
in our slow cooker and instant pot. So take us out, Billis. So you guys, tell us what you think we should be cooking in our instant pots and slow cookers for the summer. Join our community by visiting didn't I just feed you.com slash community. We offer a free listeners group and also a supporting membership that comes with Ella perks, including <laughs> two exclusive mini episodes every single month. By the way, we just recorded one, not many, like full juicy deliciousness. You yeah, want those actually, bonus like episodes. Full episodes. Oh yeah. It's like a it's group. like basically two bonus episodes, live events, lifetime access to our private Instagram feed, and so much more. Uh speaking of Instagram, you can find us there as at didn't I just feed you. You can also subscribe to our newsletter from there or from our site. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Didn't I Just Feed You wherever you get your podcasts so that you don't miss a single episode. Our music is Good Old Times by Alex Cohen, provided by Jim Endo. A humongous thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. I am Stacy, And I'm Megan. Stay sane and well fed. Until next week. Hey, Oliver. Yep. What's your favorite cheese? Pepper Jack. Oh, no, no, no. Mozzarella. Yeah, mozzarella. <laughs>